My name is f***ing Chucky! Oh, I just love a good sequel. Don't you? Hi, I'm doing very good. So I'm Tyler Nichols from JoeBlow.com and this is an absolute pleasure. You are an absolute legend, Miss Tilly. So thank, thank you, you for talking with me today. Thank you. We love <laughs> <So>. Joe Blow. <laughs> well, and so what did you personally find more difficult? Starting the first season during the pandemic or resuming the third season after the writers and actors strike? Oh my gosh, we've had the worst luck. The first season in the pandemic and I had to quarantine for 14 days, everybody wearing a mask. Second season, also ever wearing a mask. Third season, the first half, the writer's strike had happened. So Don Mancini was not allowed on the set. There was a lot of loose ends, like he was, usually he's always writing, 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 that we could not fix, you know? And then all of a sudden, right in the middle, we filmed four episodes. We had to stop and then we were off for, I don't know, four or five months. And then we had to go back to Canada in the dead of winter and finish it up legacy split. I would say the worst so was the pandemic. I had quarantined for a year and three months and I just was just venturing, blinking into the sunlight. So <laughs> it was it was really hard, all the COVID protocols and everything. But we have had um we have had bad luck with that. Uh oh, and then the writer's strike also when the SAG strike happened was really sad because we couldn't promote our series and the studio decided to throw out the first four episodes i think a lot of people didn't know they were out there because they didn't see us going to comic-con and watch what happens live and you know we weren't even allowed to put a picture that that i think was the hardest because when the writer field strike was happening they didn't want us to be shut down so i couldn't do my usual oh here i am in the trailer oh got my wig on trailer selfie we weren't allowed even allowed to do that so i think that was probably the most difficult because, you know, I love my selfies. I love my Instagram. <laughs> it's just really nice to be able to promote the show again. Yeah. Well, and I personally feel that the Tiffany centric episodes are the standouts every season. And oh, I've always you. been when I've always been really curious as to how much input that you have on the character of Tiffany or mm -hmm. if you just take what Don gives you and make magic. Well, Don is one of my best friends, and we love each other, and we bounce off of each other a lot. Like, for example, the seed of Chucky. I was feeding him some of the lines, and I was like, oh, you have to make Tiffany, like, this diva from hell. And so we were just gleefully writing all these terrible things that Jennifer Tilly was doing, and then the studio made us rewrite it. They're like, oh, she's so awful. <laughs> it's like, can't she just be a nice girl that's being terrorized by a doll? <laughs> so um, Don, like, Don loves his script. He's got a great group of writers. And I always have to kind of fight him tooth for, tooth, tooth, tooth for nail, tooth for nail. Sometimes I, but I will pitch things a lot of times, like I'll, do, I'll put in some jokes or whatever. And then it's usually, okay, now can you do it the way I wrote it, please? But then a lot of times <laughs> he'll look at it and then he'll say, no, that joke was actually pretty good. So he loves my input. Uh, a lot of times he likes uh, that Tiffany, you know, she's, she's sort of in and she's kind of a smart ass. He likes that element in it, so he does let me improvise. But you know, the script is also so great. Yeah. And also, when I get the character, when the character, I do a lot of my own. Like I bring a lot of my own clothes. I have a lot of input into how Tiffany's presented. Like when she's going down the Green Mile, I was like, "Oh my God, can I have like a long black veil that drags on the ground?" <laughs> and Don, Don was like, "Great!" Not like, "Wow, where's she gonna get a long black veil in jail?" And then the costumer also, goes, "I know where I can get some fabric." So I actually really love that shot, which you see in the trailer, where she's going to her execution down the green mile. It's just very, very dramatic. And Tiffany always has an inherent sense of the dramatic. And I love this season, when I looked at the script, they usually send two giant suitcases of all my most glittery clothes off to Toronto. She only had a scene in the courtroom where it said she's wearing a demure suit. And then it said that she's in a, I was like, I'm in a uniform. Like, pretty much the whole season I was like this will be easy didn't even send the suitcase and then I got there and I found out that Don's like no what demure uniform she's Tiffany so now you see me on this stand in a glittery <laughs> red dress and a feather bow on the bow was mine and then um he said and then she enchants the guards and then she doesn't have to wear a uniform anymore and she gets to wear all her fun clothes which I just love it. It's like it's a show about a doll that kills people. Why can't Tiffany wear red stilettos in jail? 
I don't see why not. <laughs> but I did do a little mood board of, you know, all those sixties like exploitational movies like women in you know women behind bars, you know, that sort of pseudo lesbianic, you know, they're tearing each other's hair out. And so that that's where I wanted them to really shorten my uniform and with a very low cut. And he don't agree that there's a comic book element to Tiffany that she gets away with a lot of stuff that nobody else does. When you see the acting from the kids and you know some of the other characters, it's very hyper realistic. We have like brilliant young actors and it's very real. And somehow it works that Tiffany comes in from this entire other universe, like some like crazed drag queen, goth <laughs> girl. And it somehow works with the very naturalistic, beautiful coming of age story that he's weaving around the two leads, Jake and David. Well, and I imagine that that level of trust must be very freeing for you as an actor, so. It really is. I, I adore Don. Everybody does. Like, we have the greatest crew and cinematographer, the actors. Third season, nobody's fighting. <laughs> Everything's just a big <laughs> love fest. We're all like, oh, who's going to send donuts to the set today? And it's just everybody loves what they're doing, and I think it shows in the finished product. Well, and you've been with the series for a very long time, so I have to ask you, since it's what everyone's talking about it, what's your opinion on Chucky potentially going to space? Well, Don was saying it sort of facetiously, um, <laughs> but it would be really awesome. I would love to see um, Chucky kind of bouncing around in zero zero gravity. Space is a very, movies about space, they're, they're very chilly and it's a very kind of horrifying, terrifying place. Like you don't really know what's out there. But I don't only want Chucky to go to space if Tiffany can come to space with him as well. But, you know, we're all always pitching Chucky in Hawaii because we're thinking, oh, it'd be so fun to film in Hawaii. <laughs> space <laughs> sounds like a soundstage on the back of the universe a lot. Not so much fun. Although we do all of our filming in, um, in Toronto, so it would be a soundstage in Toronto. But I think that it would be, it would definitely be a great location for some exotic storylines for sure. So, well, and also in your ideal world, does Chucky wrap up his story on TV or in a movie? Oh, I love doing the series. I just want the series to go on forever. I don't think he's ever gonna wrap up his, um, uh, I don't think he's ever gonna wrap up his story. I think, um, I don't think he ever is. I think, you know, Don has a, a deal for television series and also movies. I think there'll be more movies in the future. I somehow feel like 40 years from now, when I have left this planet, there's still going to be Chucky. Maybe there'll be a Chucky cartoon like the Flintstones, but there is still going to be Chucky because as Tiffany says, he's a cockroach. He will never die. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great way to end it. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. It's great talking to you too. Spirits are trying to warn you about Chucky. He's dying for good this time. He's the only one who knows where my sister is. We have to hurry. Chucky's out for blood. So uh, what did you guys find more difficult, starting the first season during the pandemic or resuming the third oh. season after the writers and actors strike? That's a good question. Um, for me, definitely. Yeah. Pandemic. Um, I mean, we were just yeah. coming out of it. And also, I think with the pandemic, it was so hard because when we got on set, everybody was in masks and we were inside and it was just like so hot filming all day. And it was like we had to all be distanced and sitting apart from each other and the COVID testing just like itching our noses and it was just like just yeah not a fun time to be on set um but at the same time I think it definitely brought us closer because we were kind of all in a little pod so we couldn't go yeah. anywhere or see anybody else or do anything so we literally were just constantly with each other all the time so I think it was a blessing and a curse but definitely pandemic was harder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and with like this set I mean sets usually feel like a whole family thing but because everybody had their masks on you didn't really get to learn and and especially after when uh when season three was rolling out or coming around that we actually got to see people's faces and it's so different than what i expected we were all pleasantly surprised <laughs> but um we had to relearn everybody's names at that point because um and i'm already bad with names already so that was a whole ordeal but um yeah, it was definitely, I, I, you know, it, filming with the pandemic was a lot more difficult than coming back, I would say. Yes. 
So uh, I guess, too, so you three have grown so much as actors during the series, and it seems like you've developed quite the bond. Can you talk about what it means to go through this journey together as such a tight-knit group? I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, it was so, it was so much fun. I, mean, I think that I, I keep saying it, the one thing that has kept stable with the show throughout the three years, everything else is changing. Everybody else is dying. Everything is going crazy, but we always stay stable. And like our three little relationship in the show is always the one stable thing for our characters too. Um, so I think that definitely comes through in our real life relationships too. Um, and it just feels like we started yesterday. It feels like no time's passed and it's so scary um but yeah i mean it's it's been great i mean we've kind of grown up together in a way um so it's yeah. been really fun we've all had a very crafted close bond on set and off set mm -hmm. well, yeah. i was i was lucky enough to see some of the episodes without the effects work and it's quite incredible <laughs> to see the puppeteers it's a whole different show you guys it yeah. really really is and so has it gotten to the point for you guys where you can easily ignore the puppeteers oh, or yeah so they we, do such a good job with the doll that it's not even like you're working with people the, the, only, the doll um, is so lifelike the only hard part is that sometimes the puppeteers be cracking jokes mid-scene i'm like oh <laughs> yeah and then i start from laughing yeah. <laughs> that's the only hard part i guess if that's not even a bad thing but um yeah it's super cool work seeing them work and super easy i don't know i, I can just because Ch chucky is so lifelike it's he's like basically just a person yeah, yeah. the green suit just disappear <laughs> <laughs> That's that's great to hear. Well, and so it's this is technically isn't a spoiler because it's in the trailer for the new season. So I have to ask, how do you guys feel about being absolutely covered in fake blood? Because oh, you're in it man, a lot. I don't think people realize okay. the discomfort that comes with that. <laughs> okay. It's, it depends on the blood, though. Depends on the blood. I mean, uh, in one of the scenes, there was it was more like watery blood, which was fine, but then you get stained, and then you know you're pink for a while um and you know and then you're pink in places that you didn't expect to be pink um <laughs> and then there's the the blood that is made of like sugar and stuff like that and that's the one that really sticks to your hair and you know it's just a whole ordeal i remember like i could not move my neck it was just like you can't like move any movement just stretches your skin and then, oh <laughs> Well, yeah. I will. I yeah. will just say, Olivia, you had an awesome look because with the blonde hair and the red. <laughs> I say second time's the charm. I got to do it in season two, and I was so excited to do it again in season three. Everybody was like, "Why would you want to do it again after doing it the first time in season two? And I was like, "It was so much fun." I mean, obviously it's uncomfortable, yeah, but the look of it is so cool. I love it so much. I mean, and also just with the blonde, it's just I think I red's definitely my color. Everybody told me I need to become a redhead. So we'll see if that, if that's so maybe Lexi season four is red. Um, you basically did, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, basically I had a red wig on for the yeah. remainder of the um, show. Um, but it was so much fun. I love being covered in blood. It's so great. Yeah, it was fun. Um, but then after like the seventh time we did it, I was really cold. It was, like, oh, yeah. it was really cold. And then I was like a wet, like stray cat at the end of the day. I, when we finished shooting that scene, I was like, I was like, like this, I was shivering. It was crazy, but it was we fun. We were all it's huddled cool. in a little tent with yeah. Pete. And also, like, Peters. the blood pooled on my hair and just made a shield. I couldn't see anything when when they were doing the scene. It was funny. <laughs> well, it made it made for a very awesome visual. So yes. you, you definitely suffered for your guys' craft in a good yes. way. So, <laughs> Well, and that's all the time I have with you guys. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. And I uh, really look forward to seeing where you guys go in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you ever feel like the thrill is gone? Oh, uh, what's the point? Now I gotta fucking clean this up. Yes, I'm uh, Tyler Nichols with JoeBlow.com, and I am so yeah. pumped to talk with you today. Nice so, to meet you. So, uh, what did you guys find more difficult? Starting the series during the pandemic or resuming the series for the third season, like after the actors and writers strike? That's a really good question. <laughs> I, it's very, it, go ahead. Uh, for no, me, no, you go because you look like you have a. It definitely restarting the uh, restarting after the strike. The pandemic. There was also as an actor, there was all sorts of difficult, you know, adjustments I had to make as far as, you know, masks and and whatnot. Um, not having a full crew there, you know, all that kind of stuff that that just was was 
you know, not seeing people's faces for like four months. I think some crew members, I didn't see their face for a long time. They just show people the eyeballs. Until season three. Uh -huh. It was like really until season three, because we did, you know, we did, yeah. you know, full protocols, seasons one and two. And, you know, we got decimated by COVID both seasons, you know, yeah. the departments going down and, and so it's, all, it's a good question because we often like on the show, we'll sort of self dramatizingly say, you know, we've never got to do a season of the show under normal circumstances, <laughs> always been, you know, some crisis, which is true. I mean, I like in a way, I think for me, um, as the showrunner and a writer, it was getting all the scripts, all eight episodes written by May 1st last year, which is what we had to do because of, you know, in, in case a writer's strike happened, which it did. Um, so it was, you know, only through the, you know, hard work and talent of my fellow writers in the writer's room that, you know, that we got it done, but it it was hard. That was really it was hard. it was really nice coming back and having gone back. Like it was nice <laughs> to see him on set again. It was nice to have his, his feedback. Um, sometimes uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was definitely coming back. Was for me it was it was easier. Yeah. Um, well, and Devin, yeah. I have to ask. I have There's to no ask. Crisis. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, and I have to ask you too, since this series has been such an absolute whirlwind for you, you've died multiple times and come back as different characters. Can you talk about the advantages of being able to show up on the same set, but inhabit a completely different character each time? Have you, have Tyler, have you seen the last four ups? Yes, I no. have. I'm trying to avoid any of those kinds of spoilers. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. The question is: the question but you is, know where he goes. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I'm I, I'm aware of where his character uh, ends up. I I never really think about. It. I just I just go to set in sometimes different wardrobes and different hairstyles and with different written dialogue, um, in different situations, and it just kind of all just happens. It's just yeah. all just it's just re really easy to kind of get into. I think uh, this this setter part of season two season three is is uh the most fun i've had with a character i think um uh, it was just you know it was yeah. wild and crazy and and all the stuff that was going around in the elevator and, and uh <laughs> yeah and i mean i guess we can skirt around what it is you can see it in the trailer what was it like to be completely covered in in a essentially a bloodbath for this season <laughs> For a day, I felt like I was in a Kubrick film. Like it was just, like, I felt very Kubricky. You know what I mean? It was this. I, at one point, I was just in the blood up to my eyes. Um, it, it, it was. I had a blast. It was. You know, I'm sure it looks uncomfortable, but I, I had a really good time. I loved just <laughs> waiting around in a pool of blood, guys. It's just what I like. It to wasn't. Do. It wasn't always warm, though, right? No, it wasn't warm, and it wasn't. <laughs> it was a really strange consistency. It was like a almost like a watery, jelloey kind of. I mean, because they wanted that texture on camera, and, and uh, so it felt like it could have been blood, and they didn't warm it for us. And it was in Canada, and uh, in and, December, uh, I, I tried not to win. It was it summer. No, it was December. It was, it was winter. It was December. Yes, and and um, it, it was great. It was yeah. fun. I mean, you got to have fun with stuff like that because it doesn't come around very often. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, and I'm out of time. So thank you guys so much for talking with me today. This has been an absolute pleasure. You Joe Blow, your day. I love Joe Blow. Well, we love you too. We definitely make sure to cover all your stuff. So appreciate it. Yeah. Bye bye.